So we bounced back. We went 12 and 4. That is that's great. That's good shit, dude. Uh, I'm just going to hop straight into it. Uh, I'm looking to, you know, keep it going, keep it rolling. And with that, I will note that this week was super hard to make picks. There's a lot of bad teams playing each other, and there's a lot of good teams playing each other, which made it very difficult to come up with some picks. So I'm not super confident in this week, but we'll see. Jumping into Thursday, we have the Titans and the Steelers. Will Levis absolutely popping off. D-Hop, three touchdowns. They beat the Falcons. All is well. Uh, They are going to go to Pittsburgh. Rookie on a short week against, I think Minka might be out. Uh, Tennessee has a good defense. Pittsburgh has Matt Canada. So... I'm going to ride the hype train of mayonnaise in the coffee, banana with the peel on, Will Levis. I'm going to ride the wave of Will Levis because I think the Titans' defense is good enough to hold. I mean, it's not super impossible to hold the Steelers to a low amount of points, but I'm just going to go with, the the titans here next we have the germany game which sucks because not because it's in germany because actually kind of because it's in germany because i don't want to wake up at 6 30 in the morning to watch the dolphins and the chiefs play i want to watch them play i don't want to get up that early on a sunday so that sucks but i don't think it, I mean, it's probably going to be a good game, but I don't think it's going to be as good as people are making out, making it out to be. Some people are saying that this is going to be the most watched game in a while. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. But the Dolphins are winless against teams that are above 500. The Chiefs are well above 500. They did just lose to the Broncos. But if you think that they're going to lose back-to-back, I don't think they're going to lose back-to-back. And the Dolphins haven't proven proven themselves yet. So because of that, I'm not going to choose them against a team like the Chiefs until they prove themselves. So give me the Chiefs. Next, we have the Vikings and the Falcons. I'm straight up, I'm just going to pick the Falcons straight and away. Doesn't matter if they had Ritter or Heineke at quarterback. Uh, Arthur Smith is a liar, by the way. He says... Ritter's not getting pulled because of the way he's playing, but then he benches him the next week and starts Heineke. I don't know. He just doesn't like talking to the media, I think. Uh, And I'm just not comfortable in putting my faith in Jaron Hall. If Kirk Cousins was starting, I'm absolutely 100% picking the Vikings, but he's not. RIP Kirko. That really sucks about his Achilles and... I mean, you can even I, – I saw a thing where uh, the locker room was tearing up after hearing that he tore his Achilles. He meant a lot to the team. Uh, it seems like a lot of fans really like him after the quarterback thing or they kind of flipped because he got injured. I don't know. There was, there was a fair amount of hate and love. I personally like him, and it sucks. I would love for him to be a saint. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pick the Falcons because rookie quarterback, maybe if Josh Dobbs had been starting, if he had learned the offense, but he's not. And, uh, fuck the Falcons. I hope I'm wrong on this one. Go Vikings fucking skull for one day. Uh, but I did, I am picking the Falcons next. We have the bears and the saints. Are the Saints figuring out their offense? Rashid Shahid, three receptions, 150 yards, and a touchdown. Alvin Kamara, solid game. Chris Olave, I'm kind of he's kind of losing me here. Michael Thomas, he's so back. Maybe not back back, but he's he's been very consistent this year on a very inconsistent offense. 
but they are playing the Bears, who don't have a good defense. They did just get Montez Sweat. I don't know if he's playing or not, but the Saints O-line does suck, so there is that. But they are going to be fieldsless again, and it's against a solid defense. I don't know if T-Bag is up for the task. Home game for New Orleans, so give me the Saints. Rams and the Packers. Packers look bad right now. It sucks that Jordan Love is sucking. Three touchdowns to seven interceptions in the last few weeks. That's rough. The Rams are also falling off. I was trying to give them props for having a rough schedule, but they are 1-5 in five against winning teams. So now I'm starting to think maybe they're kind of frauds. I don't know their exact record, but actually let me double check this. 1-5 in five against winning teams. They've played a lot of winning teams. I'll give them that, but they're not winning those games very often. Luckily for them, the Packers are not a winning team. So with that, the Rams have just looked like a better team throughout the whole year. So I will take the Rams. Next, we have the Commanders and the Patriots. I do. I had this was the hardest game for me to pick. I was going back and forth so long. I actually had to flip a coin. Uh, it seems like Washington is only consistent when they play Philly because they play them hard every time. Other other teams, they're either hot or they're cold. Their offense is either producing or they're scoring seven points against the Giants. Also, the Patriots are hard to gauge. They beat the Bills, shut out by the Saints, blown out by the Cowboys. Blown Okay, they kind of got blown out a lot. They've shown that they can beat, they can win games against good teams. Maybe it was just the divisional rivalry. I don't know. But I think Washington has shown me more than the Patriots have. However, they have been so inconsistent, unless it's Philly. I did flip the coin. I was I originally picked Washington. I flipped the coin, and it told me Washington. So I'm going to go with the Commanders. Uh, then we have Seattle and Baltimore. Seahawks versus Ravens. This is a potential game of the week. Uh, I think this and the Philly game, those two are contenders, are my top two games of the week. Ravens had a close game in Arizona. Gus Bus is popping the fuck off right now. Oh, their, uh, their run offense is ridiculous right at this point. Uh, Seattle also had a close win in Cleveland. And I think the biggest thing is that Geno threw two picks and the Ravens' defense is very, very good and they also force a decent amount of picks. I don't exactly know where they are in the rankings. I think they've picked off other teams eight times this year. So I'm going to take Geno. The way that the Seahawks are going to either win, it's going to make or break their game, is limiting turnovers. And that's going to be the case for a lot of the games in this week. So... I'm going to take the hot hand in the Ravens right now. I know the Seahawks are also a hot hand, but Geno's turnovers lately, I'm going to use that as my reasoning to pick the Ravens. Next, we have the Buccaneers and the Texans. Uh, another another team in the Buccaneers that succeeds off defense uh, and a team that succeeds because they don't turn the ball over are the Texans. The Texans do not turn the ball over. They have one interception on the year, which is the best in the league. It was against the Saints. Um, I just think that this is going to be a really low-scoring game because both offenses have been struggling, and both teams have solid defenses. But if the Buccaneers are not going to have good ball security... I'm sorry. If the Texans keep good ball security, I think that they will win this game. Next, we have the Cardinals and the Browns. The Cardinals have no more Josh Dobbs. They are slipping on defense, and their offense also 
not so much. That kind of goes in hand in hand with Josh Dobbs is now going away. They're having the rookie Clayton Toon come in. Uh, and the Browns, they are a good team on both ends, despite all the injuries that they've had. So give me uh, so give me the Browns, and I'm also going to lock them up this week. I think this is the second time I've locked up the Browns, but lock of the week, Cleveland over Arizona. Next, we have the Colts and the Panthers. Panthers got their first win last week against the Texans. The Colts lost last week to the Saints. The Colts' offense is good, but they still are susceptible to turn, turning the ball over. Uh, the Colts' defense is also a liability. And they've given up three straight 35-plus point games. And they are going into the Panthers' stadium. They're going to Charlotte, where the Panthers have been really competitive. I think all of their games at home this year have been a one-possession game, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, they have lost... Uh, all of them, I don't remember if last week's game was a home or away game. They've lost almost all, if not all of them, because their last week first win. But I think that they are going to be playing competitive enough against a team that has a big turnover issue. I know they only turned it over once last week, but lately, in the past few weeks, under Gardner Minshew, they have had a turnover problem. So... I'm going to take the Panthers in the upset of the week. I know. I'm putting my upset of the week faith, which we got right last week, in a one-win team. I know. I know. And a division rival to the Saints. I know. What's going on? I don't know. I'm getting desperate, I think. But Panthers, upset of the week. Next, we have the Giants and the Raiders. Yucky. But Mark Davis is not fucking around anymore. He shit can Josh McDaniels. He shit can the, the GM, the OC. He uh I think it's Anth- Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce, something Pierce, uh up to interim head coach and the quarterback's coach up to OC. Um and speaking of OC, AOC starting now because Jimmy got benched I think that is a great move because I was higher on AOC than Brian Hoyer he should have had another start under his belt anyway against the Bears but Jimmy G was sucking sucking bad I mean he just left 150 yards and two touchdowns on the field by just sailing Devontae Adams so I think this is the the least they can do to keep uh, Devontae Adams happy. And I honestly think that this is going to get them the win because the Giants offense cannot get anything going. Despite maybe their defense has been good in the last couple weeks, their offense is just abysmal. And I think if the Raiders are able to put up any amount of points, even though their offense also has sucked, I think that they can get the win. It is a home game. I mean, whether or not they have enough home field advantage in Vegas. But I'm going to take the Raiders here. Next, we have potential game of the week again. The Cowboys and the Eagles. Huge implications for playoff and divisional rankings. Uh, A.J. Brown has been going crazy. I think that's six games in a row with 125 yards. He's on one of my fantasy teams, so it is fantastic having him on the team. Uh, They're both clicking on offense right now. Just, I think this is going to be a banger game. But there is one thing that I am stuck on, and that is the Dallas's lack of a rushing offense. And I know Tony Pollard was good last year, but he has seemed to have fallen off this year. I don't know what his high in yards has been this year. But I think he got like 50-something yards last game. Uh, The team total was 100 100 plus. But when you're running, you need to have your running back having that. To have an established run offense, which is something that they have lacked all year. And I think that's what the Eagles are going to take advantage of. So give me the Eagles in a probably close game. 
Moving to Sunday night, we have the Bengals and the Bills. The Bengals are heating up. I told you. I told you. I know I picked against them, but I told you they are a treat. They're a treat. I said it. Don't let the slow start fool you. They're taking on the Bills. Josh Allen has a turnover problem. He has thrown a pick in four straight games, I believe. Could be more, but I know it's, I think it's four. Cincinnati has forced the most interceptions in the league with 10. That is a recipe for a Bengals win. So, I don't trust Josh Allen to to take care of the ball. I don't care if he's the total touchdowns leader. I don't trust him to take care of the ball. I think Cincy's defense is going to do enough riding the Bengals momentum. Give me Cincinnati. Then on Monday, we got the Chargers and the Jets, which is a total just like super high to just... Uh, The power rankings, by the way, overrating the shit out of the Chargers. Uh, The Jets offense blows, but so does the Chargers defense. Chargers offense, the Jets defense has done very well against very high-level quarterbacks. So I don't want to say that the Chargers offense can overpower this solid Jets defense, but the Jets have no offense. And, I mean, you win by putting points on the board, and that's how it works. They are playing in MetLife, so I honestly think this is probably probably going to be another low-scoring game. You can think that the Chargers have figured it out on offense. I'm not quite sold on them yet, but I do do think that they're going to do just enough to win. So give me the Chargers. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. This was a painfully difficult uh, week to pick. This is a long video uh, because I was kind of rambling because I'm confused on these picks. I don't know what to do. This is going to be a rough week. I'm not too confident in this week, but I should have a couple more videos coming out pretty soon. I have a couple concept videos that are in the works right now. Um, Of course, the record predictions. I should have the hot or not out. I would like to say tomorrow night or on Friday. But until the next video. Deuces.